Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today I have kind of a different video, but I know I've been asked uh, questions around athletics in the past. And luckily I've had the privilege to meet Alex Probert here. And he is the kicker for Liberty University's football team. And we're gonna dive into essentially just a couple of questions that you guys might have about athletics and uh, we're hoping to get some of those answered today. So Alex, thanks for being here. Appreciate it, man. I'm excited. First thing that I uh, kind of want to ask is uh, for a little bit of background about your past uh, high school. What sports did you do in high school, and uh, kind of what was the general story of that that led you to Liberty University? Sure. Yeah. So in high school, I played two sports. I played a bunch of sports as a kid, but for the most part, I ended up just doing two sports in high school. Um, I ran track and field, and then I played football. Um, and as kind of time went by in high school and it kind of became apparent that I might have an opportunity to go to college for football. I just played football. So I stopped playing track or running track my senior year of high school um, and I just kicked. Um, but for the most part, I played a lot of sports when I was really young and kicking was kind of a joke and it just kind of came out of nowhere and I started doing it every day. So that's kind of it and now I'm here. So I guess one of the first and like most broad questions that I want to ask here today is what's the most challenging thing about being a D1 athlete? For me, I think it would definitely be the academic balance with football because you're going to have a lot of time to do school and you're going to have a lot of time to do your sport, but I think the hardest thing is making them work together. Um, one day will look like this for us. We'll have a really morning, really early morning workout, um, and then right after that you go to class. So when you talk about going to class, most days you're going to wake up tired. You're going to be even more tired if you wake up, go do a whole workout with your team, and then go to a class for two hours. Um, so I think for me the hardest thing is really just balancing a full academic schedule like every other student and then on top of that doing you know a five hour football practice in the afternoon and then as soon as football gets done you're trying to find a way to eat get mm -hmm. food you're trying to find a way to go to your mandatory study hours because my freshman year I did do six hours a week of studying that they made me do which definitely helped me in hindsight it definitely allowed me to be successful um, but it was definitely the most challenging thing because in high school it wasn't really hard because sports took up hardly any time. Um, but in college, it's a full-time job on top of the full academic stuff. Um, but it's really just time management. And once you get that done, it's pretty easy. So growing up, specifically in high school, did you ever dream or think that you would be kicking for a D1 school? Short answer is no. Um, it just kind of came out of nowhere, really. Um, I've been playing all the athlete positions when I was younger. I played running back, I even played defensive line for a while. And if you know much about football, Defensive linemen or linemen in general are these huge guys. You know, I'm five foot seven, I'm about 180 pounds. So that ended pretty quickly for me, you know, growing up. But in middle school, one of my friends had actually been really good at kicking and I wanted to do all the positions. So I just jokingly went and started practicing kicking and I kind of fell in love with it because it was like a game within a game, within a sport. And so I just really fell in love with it. A few years went by and I never really thought, oh yeah, I'm going to go to college for football. It was just like, a, oh, I enjoy doing this. And I had a few coaches kind of say, have you ever gone to a college camp? Have you ever tried kicking in front of college coaches and things like that? Um, and I was like, no, I've never done that. So I tried doing that for a couple of years, a few opportunities. I was fortunate enough to have kind of come up. I had West Point come up. I had Liberty come up. Um, and it really just kind of came into the, the, the limelight my junior year of high school, kind of out of nowhere. Because I was the kind of the kid was like, all right, well, when high school sports are done, I'm just going to go to college and do academics and that's it, you know, but once I had a few college coaches say, hey, have you ever thought about playing college football? I was like, uh, no, but now I am. So it just kind of came out of nowhere um, and I was really just fortunate enough to have those opportunities come up. I so it was... Cool. Was Liberty was Liberty on your radar at all? Was it a dream school or how did, how did that really come up? Yeah, no, it wasn't. <laughs> um, my, my dream school, you know, and obviously I love where I'm at now. I love Liberty. I love where mm -hmm. I'm at. I chose this place for the people and the people that are here. Um, but growing up, I really just wanted to play for the hometown team, which was Minnesota, because mm -hmm. I'm from Minnesota. Um, Liberty was 20 hours away when I was kind of first hearing about it. Um, so I, I never really had a dream school other than just the home school mm -hmm. in Minnesota. Um, and so, Liberty had kind of come up again, 
I had been putting it on the back burner. My dad had asked me if I wanted to send film there. I said, what's that? What's Liberty? I don't know much about that. He ended up sending my film anyway. Um, and one of the coaches ended up reaching out to me and just, we kind of just kept contact for a long period of time. Um, but no, it wasn't a dream school. It just happened to be an opportunity that just kind of presented itself. And since I took it, I've never looked backwards. It's been one of my favorite things I've ever been able to say I've chosen is coming to the school. Um, but that's mostly just because of the people here. So. Okay, so speaking speaking on the topic of faith, how, how do you think Liberty University Athletics differs from those of just secular schools? I think it's a lot more expected for the environment um, that you're going into a Christian private university. It's just a lot more expected that you're going to be in that day-to-day -day environment of Christianity or faith-driven choices or just leadership. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the main difference is probably just comes from our ultimate goal. Um, when I came into Liberty, it was raising champions for Christ or building champions for Christ is what we'd break it down on everyday football. I think that was the biggest thing is we were very particular with what we wanted to do with football. And for me, you know, one of the things we talked about is why. Why do you do things? What is your why to get up every morning? For me, when I came to Liberty, it was that I wanted to do well for the team, specifically mm -hmm. just myself, so that the team could be successful. So that with the team's success, we could put Liberty on the map, make Liberty more popular, and also bring more attention to Christianity. For me, that was my why. So mm -hmm. if I do well, the team can do well, that message can be spread out there. Um, so I think that's the main difference is we are really striving to build champions for Christ and show people what Christianity is as well as how that helps us in life and helps us be successful. But I think at the same point, the main difference is most teams just don't have that as their ultimate goal. Um, there's still going to be Bible studies. There's going to be guys that are Christian. I know a lot of big schools that do that. Um, but I think that's the main difference is our, our goal is just a lot more specific. So. so I have to ask this because I was a freshman when this happened, but the Baylor win. You scored the first three points of the game at uh, Baylor. Uh, what, was, what was the Baylor win like? What was the team's uh, reaction? I know I'm asking this like two and a half years <laughs> later, but I'm just really curious. How was the Baylor win? You know, I think it's actually pretty cool because we're kind of in the same mindset right now, Syracuse, that we were before Baylor. You know, it was every single day we'd show up to the weight room, every practice, every meeting, it was, we're gonna be Baylor. That was the mindset every day. And it's pretty similar now with Syracuse. Um, but we really just kind of showed up every day thinking we could do this. Mm -hmm. And so we get to their stadium and we start doing all of our stuff like we would against any other team, the pregame warmups, the locker room, pregame talking, um, pregame meetings with our coaches. And we go out and we actually start playing. <laughs> and the cool part was we started playing and as we started going through the game, we were hanging with them and we were beating them. You know, not necessarily point wise, because right. right away, you know, we went back and forth. But I still remember watching our offense go down the field thinking, we can do this. Like, this is real. This is going to happen. So I went out there. I kicked my first field goal, which, you know, it wasn't anything special, but it was just kind of like business as usual. Um, and being in Texas, the ball just popped off my foot. And it just felt even better, you know, because we're in Texas, all the warm air. As, it, as the game starts going by longer and longer, we really start to believe we can do this. And it was a high scoring game. We were at yeah. 50 plus points. I had four field goals. It was the most field goals I'd ever kicked in the game. Uh, Buckshot and all those other guys were just killing it. They were, they were going down feel like no other. Our defense was making stops. But I mean, we get to the fourth quarter and we're just biting our nails because we, we realize like we're this close to beating our first power five school. Um, you know, most people will say like, oh, they had a bad season, mm -hmm. but like they weren't bad. They were very good against us. Um, but it was definitely one of the coolest memories I have. I remember seeing all the students on campus celebrating what happened after. What's up? We just beat Baylor in football. Screw the Bears, baby. We the best. We the best out here. Come on now. LU, fan the flames. Number one. You like that? We were super psyched to get back there and not to plug my channel too much but I actually put a story on about how we got stranded back in Charlotte when we got done with that game because we couldn't get back because right. of the weather we couldn't land the plane um, but we were super excited to get back and see the fans ended up not happening we yeah. stayed the night in Charlotte slept overnight in an airport on the floor but uh but yeah it was definitely probably one of the coolest games to play in because their crowd was 10 feet their entire student section was like 10 feet behind us Man. so the entire game is just crazy but it's definitely one of my favorite memories what is what is probably like one of the biggest things you didn't expect coming into college athletics i would say what i did expect was i expected it to be very hard i expected it to be 
a lot of time commitment. I would say the one thing I didn't expect was going to definitely be when the day's done, your brain is still on it. You know, I thought like it'd be like, okay, you go to class, you go to football, you get done, you sleep, you wake up, do it again. But like your brain is constantly on that. I didn't expect myself to be thinking football class, you know, and all these things 24 seven. Mm -hmm. Because in high school, you really don't have that ulterior pressure or interior pressure building up in your brain. You know, that's actually why I ended up uh, moving off campus because I just wanted to feel like I could move away from classes and football yeah. every single day. Um, living on campus was great, but I also just felt like I was never getting away from it. And I never would have expected, you know, to get a little more personal, to burn out, really. Mm -hmm. Because it's such, so much demanding, you know, things on a daily basis that you really just, if you're not bought in and you're not focused up, you're going to burn out. You're going to have a day where you're just like, I can't do this. I need to skip class. I need to skip football. Um, I know I never expected that. I honestly thought it would be kind of a walk in the park because I had played football in high school. I had done classes in high school, but I had never done the college aspect. Mm -hmm. College is not as hard as I thought it would be, but it's a lot more daily things that you have to do. And yeah. then on top of that, the hardest thing is finding food on a daily basis. <laughs> so I didn't expect it to be so mentally demanding, I would say. And that's probably like the one thing that I would tell my younger self, like, hey, be prepared, you know, for the mental challenges with it. So what do you think of the hometown crowd here at Liberty and playing at home? What's that atmosphere like um, compared to playing on the road? It's definitely helpful. One of the coolest things that we pride ourselves in about our home crowd is when they throw up the baby powder on the first kickoff. That's one of the main reasons I absolutely hope and pray that I get to start the game on the kickoff because nothing makes me more hype or more excited than when I get to start the game on the kickoff and see our home fans throw up the powder. Um, but it's definitely helpful when you're at home You feel like a sense of honor, you know, like you own this place Like mm -hmm. I've got to do my best for the people here because it's your home stadium when you're playing in an away game Especially like Baylor we talked about that or Virginia Tech when the crowd is 90 to 1 as far as home team and your fans that have mm -hmm. traveled It's pretty daunting at times because there's thousands and thousands of people watching um, But our home fans bring a lot of energy to us the main reason we play football is because we love the sport. I'd say the second reason is we want to do well for the people watching us. For all the people that have poured into us and invested their time and money into us, we want to do well for them as well. Whether that be family, friends, our own student body, you know, we love nothing more than winning a game, running down the side of the stadium, high-fiving all the fans that stayed through the fourth quarter. We love celebrating with them. Um, I don't think we've had any stadium rushes, to my knowledge, that happened at Baylor, but it was an away game. Um, but we're hoping to have a win somewhere in there where the fans can come down. Um, actually, we've had a few where the fans have come down and celebrated with us at after the game. game. Yeah, oh, it was, yeah, it's kind of towards the end. Uh, it um, happened at I, my freshman year. It happened just after Baylor. Like, it was like Indiana State or something. Yeah, like, it has happened field. before, and that's one of the coolest things ever. We love it. I'm sure security hates it. Oh, they hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but we enjoy celebrating with the fans because we, we love the community that we are able to have through athletics as well as just you know school and being able to rep the logo mm -hmm. liberty like it's a favorite thing we get to do um, but our home crowd definitely helps they bring the energy um, and it's just it's really fun so i guess kind of kind of going along the lines of the home crowd how does the crowd factor into a game i'd say uh to give a little more like background and perspective for this being a place kicker i kick the football with my foot it's probably common sense to some people for other people they're like what's that mm -hmm. so i kick the football with my foot now, the hardest thing for me is the mental side. When I'm walking out, I can't be thinking, oh, I'm gonna miss, or what if I mess up? You know, and so when I'm walking out, you hear the crowd noise, and you hear people screaming, and sometimes the opposite team will be sitting there pointing at me, and I'll make eye contact with them right before, so I try to just look down and focus. Um, but when you hear the crowd, it gets in your head, because mm -hmm. it's thousands and thousands of people that are screaming, maybe screaming your name, maybe screaming for you to mess up, we don't want you to win, but when you're at home, in my mind, I'm thinking these people are rooting for me. They want me to do well. When I'm in an away game, it's usually safe to say none of them want me to do well. Right. They all want me to mess up. So when I'm at home, it's just a little bit more, I'd say positive energy within myself and my mental side because in my head, I'm thinking these people want me to do well. And when you make a kick and you hear the cheering, it's like, okay, I was able to do what, what I could do for my, my crowd. Mm -hmm. You know, So that definitely helps me when I'm at home, um, but away games is definitely harder with at an away crowd. At an away game, like if you make a big field goal and it silences the crowd, does that get you hyped at all? Sometimes that happens. Other times it's kind of funny. The, the opposing fans will actually still be nice. Sometimes <laughs> that'll happen. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's definitely highly expected for the, uh, the home team to block my kick. Mm -hmm. And when that doesn't happen, sometimes the other crowd will just kind of 
come on. But, <laughs> but yeah. So this is kind of just a liberty related question, but like, are you required to go to convo? Yes. Um, I'm not trying to be super obvious with the Liberty Way, but every Liberty student must follow the Liberty Way. The only exception for an athlete on why they wouldn't be at convocation is if they had a doctor's appointment, a surgery, which same thing as a student. If you had a doctor's appointment or surgery, you don't have to go. Right. Um, but for the most part, everybody's required to go. You don't have any kind of leniency for not going to convo just because we had a morning practice or just because we were up late the last night doing mm -hmm. homework. I've had many times come up with a workout and our coaches say, go to convo. <laughs> we will be taking attendance, go to convo. So I'd say 99% of athletes go to convo every day. So how can high school students now prepare for college athletics? One of the things I think of in that scenario is what I would tell myself before I'd gone to college. Um, the first thing is definitely gonna be focus on grades work really hard in the classroom because that's only going to make your life easier after mm -hmm. college because you're actually going to understand what you learned number yeah. one which i think is very obvious but also overlooked that a lot of people just kind of turn in homework as fast as they can to get it over with um, but really focus on your work work ahead do it diligently and well um, because number one if you're going into college athletics it's going to be one of the biggest things that will hinder you if you don't take care of classes you can't take care of your sports mm -hmm. if you take care of your sports classes don't matter as much. And that's the problem is you won't be eligible if you don't do your classes. So I would just say really work on being diligent about all the things you have to do. Work ahead in the classroom. Make sure that's you know ironed out before you get to college. Work on anything that you can to improve your time management skills. Um, the biggest thing is gonna be time commitments. So being able to look at a day and say, okay, where's my free time on a Tuesday at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., noon. Then you can kind of see like, okay, these are the things I have to do Excuse me, these are the things I have to do in a day, and here's the time that I have to do it. So work hard in the classroom, work on your time management, um, and definitely, and this is kind of more personal again, um, but have friends that you can talk to when it gets difficult, because in high school, it's pretty obvious you've got friends, right. but if you go to college, you might have to make a whole new friends group. Being an athlete, you're gonna be blessed with a whole team, so making friends on the team that you can talk to, you know, just talking to people about when you need help um, or athletics usually have tutors as well. Um, but definitely just taking care of the small things and just trying to stay on top of that as often as you can is going to make it so much easier. Anyway, so that's kind of all the questions that uh, I had. So thank you so much for being here and just uh, being able to answer some of these. As for people watching this video, I know a lot of you guys are high school students that are probably curious about athletics. Uh, if, if you have any more questions, just drop it below in the comments as I'm sure if we get a couple more questions, we can totally do another video in the future. In addition, check out Alex's channel. Uh, he's been doing all types of different videos, some of them Liberty related, some of them more around business, but he's a really cool guy. He's got some really great content. You should definitely check him out. Appreciate it, yeah. <laughs> one, thing, one thing I'll say as well to close out the video, if you have any questions, you know, I would definitely like to respond to that. If you're a high school athlete, you're just looking to kind of get you know, some information on what it's like to be a student athlete. I'm always open to talk to that. You can find my social media. I know you're on social media as yeah. well. Um, I'll put those in the link yeah. or in the in the that box that's right below below yeah. the description box. There we go. All right. If you really like this content, if you're new to my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. It's uh, really encouraging to me when uh, when you know you guys subscribe to my content because I know that I'm heading in the right direction to help you guys out as you guys are looking for schools. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you guys later.